So business development can come in many phases, many stages. If you do some research on the internet, you'll find a thousand different models. But um, from my own practice, my own experience as a business owner, and all of my research as an educator in the space, I have come up with seven key stages of business development. So our first stage is to be looking at our market positioning. This means is where do we sit within our marketplace? What reputation do we want to have within that marketplace? How big, how big of a market share do we want to have? Um, how much of or how, what percentage of our potential service users are we actually going to try and take on board? We need to have a very clear idea of who our customer avatar, who our customers actually are, and specifically how we help them. So what our unique selling propositions, what our unique value propositions are, and what results it is that we provide our customers. So first of all, ask yourself, what is your market positioning? Where do you want to be in your marketplace? How much of your market do you want to own? So go through and on a bit of paper now, just write down your answers to those questions. Uh, it would be awesome if you share what your market positioning is over in the discussion panel. So next stage we have is the targeting opportunities stage of business development. This is when we really make a plan and strategy of exactly how we're going to get in front of our target market. How are they going to know about us? It's where we start gathering intelligence and information about our target market, about our opportunities that might be out there. It's when we're looking at the types of people or companies or other opportunities that exist that we could be tapping into, that we could be making the most of. We're going to be looking at who we're going to sell to and where we're going to go in order to actually find those customers to get those opportunities. And we're also going to look at this stage, um, you know, how many of each of those different types of people we're actually going to need in order to hit our targets. So that's our targeting opportunities. So again, use these as questions. And I'd like you to take the time now to answer what are your targeting opportunities? How are you going to get in front of your target audience? You know, go through those, those points there. And again, I'd love to hear what your targeting opportunities are when we go uh, by putting those in the discussion group and again perhaps when we have our live Q&A. Then stage three is our capture targeted leads stage. This is when we actually fish up and collect our customers. So we figured out who they are. This is where we now um, have a clear strategy of how we're going to turn those potential people, potential paying customers into paying ones. Um, this is where we're going to really understand what our sales funnel actually looks like, how we're going to keep our sales funnel full so we have a constant stream of money coming into the business. Uh, we're going to talk about how many leads that we need to get, so how, leads being our potential customers, so that we can turn those into conversions. By that, conversions, we mean sales. We're going to be looking at how we're going to attract those customers and uh, what problems they've got that we can actually solve. So that's stage three. Stage four is the relationship building stage. So this is very much about nurturing the relationships, developing rapport with the decision makers from our target market. It's about finding out how we can make them happier, how we can make their lives easier, and how we can make their whole situation much more satisfying by being part of their world. We want them to be happier because we're there. And this is how we build more rapport. We want to build knowability, likability, and trustability. We want them to really get to trust us. We want to have regular contact with them, giving them updates, give them progress updates if we're doing work for them. And uh, if we're not doing work for them yet, making sure that we have a strategy in place for following them up so that we can turn them into paying customers. Phase five is our selling stage of business development. So we've figured out who they are, we've built a relationship with them, uh, and now we need to actually sell to them. So we want to create special tailored offerings. Uh, we might do some bundling, we might create some packages. Uh, we're going to be talking about all of these later on in the course. We need to be making sure that we've got a very clear menu of packages, of services, or perhaps a pick and mix of uh, different types of services and, and products that we can offer our customers so that they actually know what they can buy from us. It's amazing how uh, when we don't give somebody a menu, they don't know what they want to have for dinner. 
as soon as they're given a menu or a choice, it's much easier for them to make a decision. So we want to do the same when it comes to our business. We want to also at this stage make sure we have a very clear sales process in place. We want to even go as far as having script. So we want to have scripts for our phone calls, for our emails, uh, for each of the different phases of making a sale to a customer because this is going to make sure that our lives are easier but that we're trying to convert at the highest rate every single time. We get, need to know what our customer's journey actually looks like. You know, how, um, what stages do they go through when they're buying from us and how often are they likely to be able to buy from us? Can we make sure that we set up a selling system to capture them every single time they're going to need services and products like ours. And uh, of course, this is also when we get a really good idea of what the benchmarks are within our industry so that uh, we are making sure that we are not only competitive, but also getting paid a good price for whatever it is that we are offering. If we're offering more, if our service goes above and beyond what our customers are offering, then our sales strategy needs to include a higher price than our competitors are charging. Number six is our performance and execution stage. So we've got the job, they've paid us, we now actually have to deliver that job. So this is where we, uh, I've heard, you may have heard the term under promise and over deliver so that you're always exceeding expectations. Fulfill your sales promise, making sure that you surprise them with exceptional service, not just satisfactory service. We want to really exceed the expectations they have of the service that we provide them. We want to meet our deadlines, so deliver early or on time. We want to uh, also see if we can get feedback from our customers. This is great if we can get testimonials. Testimonials and referrals get us lots of money. Uh, we also want to see if we can improve our service in any way. So encouraging customers to be honest with us about their experience with our company is great for us building a more successful company in the future. And finally, we have stage seven, which is our reward, growth, and sustainability phase. This is when we get profits. This is when our invoices get paid. This is when we can re replicate the successful practices that we have put into place. It's when we can create models and frameworks around what worked for us in making that sale and uh, doing a successful job. It's when we can create more systems and automation within our company, perhaps now internally running the way things we, we run things in our, inside our business, we can start setting a little flow so that we have a habit of the way we do everything and a system for doing everything so that as we go through our business, as we grow and go through that growth journey, our lives become easier and it will be more simple for us to move ourselves away from the business in the future as perhaps we might take somebody else on to, to take our place, whether that's somebody else buying it from us or whether it's us actually taking on, I don't know, uh, some staff, for instance. And uh, we also want to see if we can copy and paste the successful model to other market segments, to other niche sectors. If we've done a really good job in one place, then perhaps this is when we can see how can we now replicate this uh, to another area to open up our funnel and open up our, our opportunities for getting more customers. And uh, another thing we want to do here in this seventh phase is to sell our byproducts. So what we mean by that is we will have produced documents, we will have produced things, systems, services, perhaps. Uh, we may have even created a little package for that customer that we could now offer to other customers. So when I say sell your byproducts, take a look at all the things you had to produce and do and work on in order to get that job done for that customer and see if you can reuse that in any way. How can you make profits out of stuff you've already done? And that's uh, the seven stages of business development. Now, what you will notice if you look at your curriculum is that your whole course has been built around really helping you get your head around uh, these seven stages of business development and some. And we've, uh, we've also thrown some more uh, detail into each of these seven sections. So this is uh, really um, a massive overview of what a successful business does, what it looks like from, from the bird's eye point of view. And we're going to continue to take you through that now.